Hi, and welcome to the Sales Acceleration Show. My name is Michael Humlet, and I'm the founder of Kiamatic. And in this show, I invite sales experts, marketing experts, and some other experts to talk about how can you scale your business and accelerate it. Today, I have a bit of a special episode because I've invited the most serious person I know in the world, which is Joris. And he's gonna explain immediately what he's doing, but he is a CFO and he's very, very much specialized in SaaS business. So we're gonna talk about software, SaaS and all the metrics and all the difficult stuff from a sales perspective in a financial perspective. So tell our viewers what you do, Joris. Uh, good morning, uh, Michael. So uh, my name is Joris Norai. I've been working a couple of years now as a freelance CFO, mm -hmm. uh, specialized in SaaS business uh, who are in a scale-up phase, so scale that phase. means uh, yeah. there's an initial m product market fit. Usually I get a call the moment that an investment is due or done, mm -hmm. and I uh, help the management team to scale up and professionalize their so, business. So there must be a pattern in all of these companies, because you see a lot, and there are lots of different SaaS models and SaaS software types of businesses. So what's the thing you notice the most? What's well, the pattern that, let's say, you're pulled in to fix straight away most of the case? I see, I see a lot of things and, and indeed I look under the hood of a couple of, uh, of these companies. Uh, I would say on the financial side, what I typically find is that uh, um, often in a, in, a, in a later stage, a couple of months after an investment is done, um, we basically conclude that there has not been raised enough money. Yeah. That's a classic uh, one. So yeah, fundraising yeah. has, uh, people are, are optimistic, entrepreneurs are extremely optimistic, otherwise they would not do what they're doing. And um, not everything works from the first time, but their financial plan or their financial ask has been based on the assumption that that, that would but, be but the it's case. it's also to get money, all the investors, they want the hockey stick, right? Yeah. And I see a lot of these business plans too, and then I'm thinking, guys, I do the backwards calculation with that amount of sales and marketing people. You can never have enough leads and statistically we get. And then of course some deals get delayed. Mm -hmm. But then the advice would be guys put in some realism, but then probably they won't get the money. Well, yeah, the, the, the second thing is the use of proceeds that I see. Yeah. So uh, uh, entrepreneurs are in love with their product. <laughs> uh, very often they are uh, engineers They themselves. should be in love with their product. Yeah. Um, they should be in love with that, their That's customer. why founders are the best salespeople in the world, because yeah, exactly. they're in love, right? Exactly, yeah. they, they have an enormous authenticity, that's no, no doubt. But what you see is that uh, sometimes an inordinate amount of money is being spent on perfecting uh, the product, yeah. Yeah. rather than going out there I know I'm kicking in open doors, but you see that a lot here uh, still in, 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 in Belgium that, uh, that, that founders or that um, a management team is spending half of their uh, cash on getting the product better without actually really testing it out in the market. Yeah, so they need to do more experiments, more sales and marketing. Yeah, that, yeah. That's why a lot of these investors also pulled me and that's how we got yeah, to, yeah. To, to meet each other, exactly. especially sales and marketing. Exactly. So, What's your view then on sales and marketing? So clearly they need to do it more because they spend way too much time on the product. What do you have like say, well, when I look at typical marketing metrics or typical sales metrics from a financial point of view? Yeah, well, there's, there's two effects that I see there. Mm -hmm. So um, when uh, salespeople are being hired, they very often make the mistake of not hiring senior enough uh, people. But it's expensive, huh? It's expensive yeah. and they're already burnt halfway through their cash because exactly. they've been spending it on uh, uh. getting a, a great product. Um, junior people in an environment that they don't know what a product, which is new and not, not completely flawless, is a uh, is, is, is big mistake and, and mm. burns, you burn through a lot of cash actually going through that learning curve. Mm. Uh, so the, the objective there or the uh, advice there would be to hire senior enough staff yeah. uh, with a beautiful incentive scheme because if they do well, everybody does well. So let me ask a question they ask me a lot. When you hire these senior sales, the question comes, they will only move when they get equity. So what's your view on that? Should you give them equity, Warren? How do you, that's a topic always comes back. And especially more juniors more. these days, they won't even move, they don't get equity. It's like, guys, you haven't proven. Yourself, even. Yeah, yeah, more, more and more. You see that. You see that with developers. You see it with uh, senior sales staff, 
also there, I mean, uh, normally you would set aside some warrants or yep. some stock options to yep. remunerate uh, those people. Doesn't mean that you have to give them from day one. Mm -hmm. uh, you still can decide on strike price and, uh, and yep. other items like that. But yeah, I think it's a natural thing. It's it's there here in this uh, in in Belgium as well. Mm. Um, it's 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 not. I mean. Th there should be an incentive like that on, mm. on, on the most senior staff. Yeah, would you give the same advice for marketing? So we talked about sales. Would mm -hmm. you give the same advice for marketing? Hire senior enough? Or is that different? Is I that more a freelance uh, approach? I or? don't know marketing as well as I do uh. sales. The first hire is, is often, uh, will often be a salesperson or a marketing person. I'm, I'm a finance guy, so I'm uh, <laughs> naturally short-sighted. So uh, in, my, in my experience, a salesperson comes in and he says, how much do I need to bring in? Yeah. The marketing comes in and he says, how much can I spend? Yeah. I like the <laughs> What's first, the budget? I like the first one better. Yeah, I like the first one better. Yeah. What, I, what I would expect from marketing um, is what people call quantitative marketing. Yeah. Um, I call it marketing. For me, yeah. there's no other marketing. And um, I mean, understanding the market, understanding the way how you get to the desired segment at mm. a price point, to be able to create those first live data points, mm -hmm. that's something that I'm absolutely obsessed by. And it could be marketing if there's budget for that. It could be a, a salesperson in charge of also yep. un uh, building that understanding. But people completely underestimate how quickly you actually get these very weak signals out of yep. the market. I, I would think with a couple of data points, with 20 to 30 data points, you can already have some significant so indications of what you should be doing. I love the fact you said data points. So let's, yeah. let's, let's talk about dashboarding and how do you run and operate the financial side of a yeah. company. Yeah. Um, what would be your main KPIs to, if we talk SaaS, to, to what would you measure? What would, I mean, what would you suggest to look at? The growth in MRR? Yeah. Why MRR and not ARR? Or it's the same thing? Because I sometimes get into discussions, now we need to go ARR and we need to go MRR. Yeah, um, I always look at MRR. I yep. mean, it's easy to uh, to communicate. Uh, you, you allow yourself to react within months if you yep. see uh, uh, evolutions, uh, good or bad. Um, so I always talk in terms of MRR. Okay. Um, what else? Well, a typical one that you see a lot is cost of acquisition. But I remember it's in the beginning when you st it's really tough to calculate. Yeah. Really, really tough. It's really tough to calculate. I like another metric better, and that's mm -hmm. churn. Churn. Uh, so the monthly churn, yeah, that's... What if I yeah. only have a few customers that bring a lot of money, then churn would be very, I mean, even if it's one customer, you have big peaks in the churn. I told you about the 20 to 30 data points, right? So yeah. if, you have, <laughs> churn, if yeah. you have four customers and one drops out, then yeah, yeah. okay, that, yeah. that's not something useful to follow up. So mm -hmm. absolutely right. Um, mm -hmm. However, um, if you measure churn... And how do you measure, because there are different ways of measuring churn, how yeah. would you look at churn? Well, like there's... The, the net churn or the, I mean... You would, well, you would have to follow up. Churn, for me, is a, is a, is a waterfall of a couple of effects, or mm -hmm. MRR, from one month to the other, you should be able to build that waterfall, albeit in your head, of how much new customers did I get? Yeah. How much more did the existing customers consume? Yeah. Uh, how much less did any other customer consume? And then which customers did I lose? The last one is what you think of is churn. Yeah. But basically that evolution from one month to the other, MRR-wise, that's an, that's an interesting thing to, uh, yeah. to, uh, to understand. If, if you look at business, so you have the typical sales business where there's a lot of velocity, mm -hmm. lots of smaller deals, classically, and then you have the other type of business where you have the, the, the less transactions, but large transactions, like bigger deals. Is there a real difference in the way you manage it financially? Because one has more impact than the other, of course, on your cash, or, or doesn't matter? Well, it does matter, uh, yep. and, and, and more, more and more you see that indeed sales cycles take a lot of time. Yep. Actually, I would think it's a misconception to think that the deal velocity is high in, a, in an early uh, scale-up mm. or with an early product because to convince the first few customers will take you, yeah, of course. could easily take but you a year. But once the machine rolls, you have these closing times, typically when you have the, let's say, the lower to mid segment, they have closing times between six weeks to three months. Yeah. And there you can put a lot of 
velocity in, in the effect. The effect also, if you forget to do your marketing properly one mm -hmm. month, you immediately have drop drop yeah. offs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but it's a different business. Yeah, that's true. So, um, and there I would think what you mentioned before, the cost of acquisition mm. is useful to track because yeah. then you're talking about small, smaller decision units. Yeah. Many that are in your funnel, many that come in, many Classic that go Classic insights, sales models yeah. to, to push I'm the cost I'm not saying down. go entirely B2C on, on, on those things, but yeah, indeed, if you yeah. talk about these, these smaller accounts, then uh, measuring cost of, uh, cost of, cost of acquisition mm. is indeed... Uh, what's the, because uh, we've been in several boards together, what's the, what's the thing that, that frustrates you the most when you sometimes sit and watch a company and say, come on guys, why don't you do that? Well, there must be something. I have. So very obvious example, but I'm going to ask you, what would be the thing that you say, come on, oh yeah. it's so obvious, why are you not seeing this? Frustrating is a big word, but what I, what I do see is that when you come at the end of your capital raise and you, when you start to run out yeah. of money, you did not hit the plan as you actually foresaw it. Um, I see a lot of good people, good founders, good managers uh, in the company losing a lot of sleep over yeah, the problems that are ahead, the wall that they're uh, driving, uh, going to drive mm -hmm. into, um, and I would, I would, uh, sometimes it's 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 justified, let's say, and there is really a problem in the product market fit. Mm -hmm. But 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 very often I think the the, the financiers uh, there should be some some mechanism or there should be some comfort given by the uh, shareholders that if if the metrics are or the business is doing what they're doing albeit a bit slower than expected mm -hmm. that additional comfort can be given to founders so that they can actually focus on so, so they being keep out them efficient the and don't don't kill them by putting yeah. so much pressure that it's painful to sometimes see sh very short-sighted decisions on, yeah. on, on, on 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 people yeah. or good people having to spend time on on, on yeah. worrying things they should actually not be worrying. I see about. a lot, especially when they're need in, in, when they're looking for investment because they go back in the cycle and the cycle. Mm -hmm. it, it just stops business for two three months. Yeah. That's crazy. Two for three me. months. Yeah. yeah, two three months. Add, That's good actually. Could add be some four, due five. diligence in that. Add yeah. some contracting in it's, that. It's You're uh, very quickly up to six months. Yeah. But um, yeah. Yeah, but then it's. It, for me, it always seems crazy that they're always like six months okay, and then they're looking for money, and then it, it's like this. But that's the game of the, the scale-up, right? Yeah, uh, obviously, as a common joke, the moment that the money is on the bank, you should start thinking about the next <laughs> round. Money. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. In a way, in so a way you should what would be your uh, right what would be your biggest advice? Where would you say, guys, so we talked about frustration, you say, okay, this, 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 you need to run your finance department because you are a freelancer, so yeah. sometimes you stay for a long time, sometimes mm -hmm. you just go out. When you walk out, you say, guys, this is the dashboard, be strict on it. So, Something is a pattern that you say, if you stick to that, it's going to be fine. Some tough questions. Um, huh? the, the you have to know, you advice. have to know, he got married last weekend, so it's about time somebody asks him back some tough questions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, when you're in your company, you're running your company, is the internet is full and you actually uh, have a couple of good books on SaaS yeah. that are useful to yeah. run your business. So actually my biggest piece of advice would be don't go overboard on the financials. So don't do overkill on your systems or, or the money that you spend don't invest too much time in on, that, yeah. your, on, your, on your accounting. I mean, there's a lot that can wait, mm -hmm. um, but um, you should be tracking something. You should be pragmatic, set something up or have somebody set something up that is easy to, to, uh, to track on a mm -hmm. weekly basis or on a monthly basis. If it's yep. not easy, uh, you're, you're gonna set it up and you're gonna so drop take a few again. KPIs and so take just a, a handful of KPIs and be obsessed about that yeah. if you have the time and the knowledge it's nice to have that in a nice uh, dashboard of yeah. some, uh, some so there's some great software even Belgian software mm. who does that uh, me I like uh, Excel sheets Google yeah, sheets of course. Uh, of course there are people's uh, people who like to read uh, graphs I'm more of a numbers person yeah. Yeah. Um, so just to have that on a monthly basis, uh, so the things that we talked about, the MRR, the churn, cost yeah. of acquisition maybe, overall OPEX, burn, uh, runway. A runway, yeah. I mean, that's, that's literally a handful yeah. and um, uh, you're good, you're good okay. for, for, for the next six months. But 
six months is eternity sometimes in the phase that you're in. I have a lot of skills for you, like with two da months down the road and it's like five years happened in two months. Because yeah, I pivoted yeah, yeah. and everything changed again. Every again. week is a month and every, every month is a year. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so what we always do at the end is I ask some quick questions. So question one, where do you get your information? Where do you get inspired? What do you read? Do you read? Do you check the internet? What, where would you go? Initially, I've been doing this for a couple of years now. Mm -hmm. I come from a very corporate background uh, mm -hmm. where I worked as a, as a controller and as a finance director. I had to er unlearn a lot of things. Uh, so that's why I say don't overdo. Yeah. I mean, uh, nobody cares about IVRS uh, yeah, here, right? Um, what, what I do is there's, there's, a cl there's great literature in um, the world and even in Belgium on... Is there one the specific that, that you want to say? So we put it in the link where you say, read that. That's um, like the base. I believe the book is called the Re Literally SaaS Metrics. SaaS Metrics? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't even read that one. Yeah, you should. Go on. Send the link. We'll put it down it's in a, the description. It's a veritable cookbook of really? uh, all KPIs that you, uh, that gonna, you can I'm think of. Check it out. Um, handily sorted by, uh, I think, by vertical or by business model. Really? So, do you run a premium business? Is it a SaaS model? Is it uh, an online marketplace? We've got all these dif different metrics. Sometimes it's useful to measure metrics in mm -hmm. one business model, not in mm -hmm. the other. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's a good book. Second one, really interesting one. You're a very busy person. How do you keep focus? How do you say no? How do you, because they're two very close to each other. How do you? Yeah, I'm trying to uh, I'm trying to limit myself to uh, uh, familiar business models. Yeah. So, if tomorrow a customer comes in blockchain, let's say, I'm gonna say no. I don't know enough about it to yeah. uh, to be uh, useful at and all. How do you say no? You say just I don't know anything about it. Talk to that guy. There's a because yeah, there's the, the reason why I'm asking is, I've seen so many sales guys, and they are really bad in saying no. So I think it's good that we learn them how to say no. Um, I just like, I mean, don't underestimate the moment that I come on board. Um, there's a, a curve, there's an investment that I need to do on my side, time-wise. To get this running. The first yeah. six months to get to learn everything. Um, so it's a real investment decision that I need to make mm -hmm. before I, 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 I start earning on that investment, let's say. Mm -mm. Um, so as a investment manager, I <laughs> test it against uh, a sub number of criteria and yeah. criteria is of course initial fit with the team, mm. the need, uh, the duration uh, that they will work with me or mm -hmm. the, uh, the is, it, is it an ad hoc very urgent thing, there's, I mean I'm not a magician, there's not much that you can do as a finance exactly. person if, yeah, the, if exactly, they, exactly. you completely uh, run out of money. Um, and indeed, so fit with the business model, fit with the vertical, mm. fit with the sector, and then we end up usually with SaaS. Yeah. And, and within SaaS, there's already more than enough to do. I, I agree. Where can we find more information about you? For the moment, I would say just go on LinkedIn yeah. and find me, uh, and we'll take it from there. Okay. Thanks for having me on the show, Joris. My pleasure. Thanks a lot. See you And around. as we're spreading the show on several media, we're going to put all the links down in the description. Thank you for watching and if you like what you've seen, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for the, to the channel for a lot more.